want to just share with you a few things the Lord pressed upon me I think we take scripture um, either too lightly or we might take it a little too serious I'd rather err on the side of t taking the Lord a little bit too seriously than than taking him too lightly okay um, everybody has anxiety everybody has worries and burdens so that's not a mystery so when the pastors are telling you oh you're gonna take your cares to the Lord he'll he'll take you he'll help you right the, the Lord's gonna help you overcome yes okay so they're not giving you the full picture okay they're not telling you the full truth and why I'm, um, I'm upset about it is because you know I don't like being lied to um, and maybe they're not lying but listen they are gonna tell you some things that are just from their own perspective we need to use God's Word so I'm gonna hit a few verses and then I'm gonna show you where uh, the New Testament speaks about it and Yeshua speaks about it because it's really important we understand what he said because if we take a scripture that that he said and we twist it then all of a sudden it means something different than what he really meant then we're susceptible to being deceived yes even if you've been born again 25 years 30 years I've been born again for 20 years I'm still learning every day we have to keep learning guys you know faith is not just saying I believe faith is actually doing the works of God the workmanship of Messiah Yeshua Jesus okay so um, Psalm 68 I'll, I'll put the, the scripture references in here Psalm 68 okay uh, 19 blessed be the Lord Adonai every day he bears our burden does God our salvation our God is a God who saves from Adonai Adonai comes escapes from death look um, always read these things always read the scriptures and, and, and be comforted by them like that's a comforting thing if we just read that all by itself but this is the foundation right we have to know that there's a place that where God is going to bring comfort to us right it's not just when we sort of get sad the question is what's the reason for your sadness and the reason is because we're separated from God because we don't want we don't want to accept the fact that we're in a timeout okay like we're in a timeout with God and he's like I love you kid but you're gonna to have to change your ways otherwise you're not getting the blessings right but this is the goal to get us to come back before him all right so Psalm 55 let's go to Psalm 55 verse 22 unload your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you he'll never permit the righteous to be moved the wicked yeah they're like shaft blown in the wind right here today God we're all gonna be we're all gonna hear today God tomorrow but look at he says the righteous unload your burdens on him um, this should lead us to remember first Peter chapter 5 which he's talking to you know pastors but this is for us too he says in verse 6 of first Peter chapter 5 therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so that at the right time he may lift you up next verse throw unload your anxieties upon him because he cares about you right didn't we just read that he'll never permit the righteous to be moved Psalm 68 every day he bears our burdens he does this is crazy this is incredible okay then what else does it say now let's go to the real the real the words of Messiah Matthew 11 okay now Yeshua says right before this in Matthew 11 he says to the father he prays in Matthew 11 to the father and he says I thank you father Lord of heaven and earth that you conceal these things from the sophisticated and educated and reveal them to ordinary folks. Now, you and me, we're ordinary folks, okay? Um, some people might think, you know, you know a lot of scripture, you, you, you study scripture, so you have this uh, intelligence. Don't focus on the intelligence of the message, okay? Focus on the pure word that's coming from God and ask him to help you understand it. He, he will give you the secrets, right? Because he knows your heart's willing. He knows you're wholehearted towards him. But here's, here's what he says. Here's what he says. Come to me. Now, verse 28 of Matthew 11. Come to me, all of you who are struggling and burdened, and I will give you rest. Okay, that, that verse people use all the time come to Jesus and he will give you rest okay what does it mean to come to Jesus well come to Jesus right like you're burdened because you're carrying sin you're carrying the weight of the hand of God right he's gonna put his hand but this is the thing it gets you to say father God where are you please help me and then he says I'm gonna give you rest not be it's because you've repented it's because you've humbled yourself before him now here's what he says 
Here's what he says in the very next verse. And I'm going to connect this dot. If I'm wrong, please forgive me. But if I'm right, this could change the game for some people that are watching. This could totally change the game. This could change absolutely where you're at right now. You will understand what God means when he says, unload your burdens on me because I love you and I want to save you. Okay. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, this is crazy. And you will find rest for your souls. That is a direct reference to Jeremiah 6.16. Now, if you are reading this and you're saying, come to me, all who are struggling and burdened, because we all have burdens, guys. The question is, what are those burdens from? Okay? They're from the weight of our sin. Okay? The anxieties we have. The Lord God did not create us to be worshipers of him, you know, to be to be worshipers of him with the spirit without the truth. And he didn't make us to be worshipers of him in just the truth without the spirit and the grace of God. OK, this connection, I think, is going to help people change and understand something deeper than maybe you've ever understood it. It hit me yesterday like a ton of bricks. But I also go, God, what is this just for me? Well, this morning. He said, no, it's not just for you. People need to hear this truth. So I'm doing that by faith. I'm praying that the ears are open, that they're listening to what the Lord God is saying today because he says, take thy yoke upon you and learn from me because I am gentle, humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now let's go to Jeremiah 6, 16 because that's what the reference is to. Now Yeshua, Jesus, when he's referencing something, from the Old Testament, we tend to look at the little verse that he said, but we don't look at the full verse or the, the context of what he's talking about. Here's what he says, and this is this is Jeremiah 6, 16. He says, here is what the Lord, Adonai God says, stand at the crossroads and look, ask about the ancient path. Okay? Which, which one is the good way? Take it and you will find rest for your souls but they said, we will not take it. Okay, I'm going to say this again because it's really important. Yeshua saying, take my yoke upon you and you will find rest for your souls. If you see Yeshua as something different than the Father, okay, different than his, his beautiful Father that he came to reconcile us to by the blood of the eternal covenant, you will not understand that what he's referencing here is something different than what the church has been teaching us. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Period. End of sentence. Boom. Okay. What does that mean? Does that mean we just keep doing our own thing? Yeshua is saying this, guys. Stand at the crossroads and look. Because if you say Jesus is God, Jesus is Messiah, Jesus is Lord, that he and the Father are one, then you will see that this is what Jesus, Yeshua, is saying to you right now. Stand at the crossroads and look. This is you and me. We're at the crossroads right now. We're looking. Okay. Ask about the ancient path. Do you know what the ancient path is? Um, do we know what the ancient path is? I forget the reference, but ancient, it, 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 it doesn't mean, like, see, people say, oh, ancient means old, right? Like, oh, we don't do that anymore. That's not what it means. It's not what it means. It's the eternal way. Eternal. The path, eternal. Look up the word. It's, it's, called, it's ancient. I don't have my concordance on me, but I, I looked it up. I didn't, I didn't put it down on a note, but look it up. It's the ancient way. How does how does God view us? Does he say, look, you're at a crossroads right now. Mickey, you're, you're at a crossroads. And um, I know that you're burdened, okay? But you're supposed to look. And you're supposed to ask about what's the path I'm supposed to take. The ancient path makes it sound old, right? Oh, I'm, gonna f I'm not following the old covenant, old ways, the old, the new covenant, right? It's brand new because God put his laws inside of us. Right? And he gave us a new spirit to put inside of us so that we would have the power to obey the eternal way. Okay, Isaiah 28 talks about the refreshing of the covenant. That's what Yeshua came to do. Right, He came to refresh the covenant so that we could have eternal life with him. So he says, which one is the good way? Okay, um, The everlasting way is the good way. Okay, What is the everlasting way? Let's look at a few other verses and then I'm out because these go too long apparently. Um, Psalm 119. Everybody knows this verse. It says, Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Which path? 
the eternal path. How do we see? Yeshua. He's the light of the world, right? That's in John. He's, he, it's in John 9, 5. Yeshua says, I am the light of the world. So he's lighting our path. His light is inside of us. We're supposed to shine that light, but, but make no mistake, he has got the light over our path, okay? Understand a couple other things. The eternal way, right? The, the, the path everlasting, the covenant everlasting. Proverbs 1. What does Proverbs 1 say? And it's all about wisdom. This is King Solomon. Proverbs 1, 15. My son, okay? Don't go along with them. Don't set your foot on their path. On their path. You want to be on his path, you guys. His way. It leads to eternal life, okay? Uh, Psalm, Proverbs 3, 17. Her ways are pleasant. Her, her ways are pleasant ways, and her paths are peace. You want peace? Follow in her paths. Who's her? Happy is the person who finds wisdom, a person who acquires understanding. For her profit exceeds that of silver, better than gaining gold, more precious than pearls. Nothing you want can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, riches and honor in her left. That's Proverbs 3, 13 through 16. Then 17 says, her ways are pleasant, all her paths are peace. And then it says in 18, this is gorgeous. She, wisdom and understanding, God's paths, his ways, is a tree of life to those who grasp her. Those who grasp her, who hold fast to her, will be made happy. Word made happy there is blessed. It's asher, it's to be made straight, it's to be happy. But the root word ashar is to be made straight. When you look at blessed is he, right? Blessed, blessed is he. What does he say this in Matthew 5? How blessed are those who are made poor in spirit, for they will, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed, it means happy, but yes, it means to be made straight. We need to be made straight so we can follow the policies and procedures of the kingdom, which are God's Torah, his laws, that are written on our heart, that God gives us the power to walk out. There's forgiveness, guys, and mercy. When you unload your anxieties upon him, what he wants for us is to give our heart to him, meaning I'm going to follow in your paths, the eternal paths, the ancient ways. What are the ancient ways? The eternal covenant, guys. You don't have to go sacrifice animals anymore. Why? Because Yeshua is the Passover lamb. He did that. And we haven't totally surrendered to him. Why? I don't know why. Because we have pride, we have arrogance, we have idols, we have things that we have made plans for that we will not do what God wants us to do because we made our own path. There is a way that seems right unto man and its ways lead to death. That is uh, 14, Proverbs 14, 12. But there is a way that seems right to a person but it's and at the end, its ways are of death. Its path is death. Look, the, the ways of, of, of God are pleasantness and righteousness and holiness and truth, okay? What is his path? His path is everlasting, okay? Yeshua lights the way to the path, the path to God's covenant, the path to God's ways. If you want to abrogate the, the law of God, the laws of God, because you are secure in your own ways, it's wrong. And the pastors will never tell you this. They'll never say, you need to obey the path. You need to repent of your ways and start living in God's ways. And you would say, it's too hard. It's too heavy. No, Yeshua said, my yoke is easy. My burden. He's being facetious. He's saying, my burden is light. You can carry it because he's going to carry it for you. Okay? Because he is inside of you. And you have peace and you will have pleasantness in your life, and you won't you won't even have you won't even understand where it comes from. You know, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Alright. Um Hebrews 13. Now this is this, you know, you gotta have you gotta have connections here. I can't just say some of these things without telling you where they come from. And I've used this verse, but it's so true, you guys. Okay, the God of peace. This is Hebrews 13, 20. The God of Shalom, the God of peace. That's our God. He's a God of peace. When we don't have peace, it's because we're disconnected from the God of Shalom. We're at the crossroads. Okay? The God of Shalom brought us up from the dead. The great shepherd of the sheep, our Lord Yeshua, Jesus, by the blood of the eternal covenant, the ancient covenant, the eternal covenant. This is it, guys. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. When we surrender our lives to him, when we pick up our cross and follow him, then we will have peace. Are you going to be persecuted? Yes. Yes. It's going to happen, man. It's going to happen, ladies. Guys, we need the power of God. And we're not going to have the power of God until we surrender our lives fully to him 
and then start walking in his ways by the power of the Holy Spirit, not by my spirit, you guys. The soul and spirit inside of me that follows after the flesh is junk. It's garbage. Those good works that I do are filthy. It's menstrual rags to God. But the ways of pleasantness, peace, and the power of the Holy Spirit is when you follow in his ways, follow his covenant, because he loves you so much that he, he sent his son to die so that he, we could follow him. So we could follow in his ways. And it's a blessing. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing, guys. It's a 100% blessing. And I'm passionate why the zeal of God, it should be in us, guys. We should be excited about Messiah. We should be excited about his return. Don't follow your own path. Follow his path. We're at the crossroads right now. We're at the crossroads right now. Surrender again, okay? We surrendered yesterday. Great. Surrender again today, right? It's keep holding fast. Keep the faith. Be faithful to the covenant. Yeshua provides the ability to do that. He does. He is the Messiah and he is Lord over all. He should be Lord of your life. And if we're willing, if you're willing, if you're willing, Yeshua will live through you. He will live through us. And we will have a power that this world has not seen in a time where the world is dying of thirst. There's a famine for the Word of God right now. A famine. People are not reading their Bibles. And if they are, they're not reading them correctly. I pray that God's wisdom will fill all of our, our hearts and our tabernacles so that we can share the light of the world with, with the people who are lost and dying. If you're a believer and you feel conviction over this, then good. Let God change you. Let God change us from everlasting to everlasting, okay? He's going to give you things that you won't understand right now, but maybe you will, but you gotta let that seed get in. Stop denying the grace of God, which is his, his unbelievable spirit that he puts inside of us and teaches us to walk in righteousness and to live holy right now in this day. Not when we get there. If you think we're gonna live holy when we get to the kingdom, you might not be, it's like we might not be in. We might not be in. And I got to say we because we're all in this together, you guys. We are the church. We're the body of Messiah. Today's Sunday. Churches are still closed. There's people that, that used to come to the to synagogue or they used to go to meet with. But now they're like, well, I don't want to go out. Like, I'm scared. Like, but maybe they were never really going there for the right reasons anyway. Um, you know, if uh, in this, you know, my wife shared this with me and I said, you know, John MacArthur had his church open and, you know, it was packed. Like that made me excited, right? Yeah, they met on Sunday, whatever. But at least people were like, I want to go hear the word of God, you know? But here's the thing. She asked a question. She says, do you think if it was in a field in 95 degrees and there was uh, not really a comfortable place to sit, no air conditioning, you think they'd still all go? And, and that was a great question. I don't know. But listen, we, we, we want God, do we? But look, when the people went to see Yeshua, I've been to Israel. You look at the hills, right? And you go, wow, he fed 5,000 on these hills. It wasn't comfortable. It wasn't a stadium. There wasn't seats. There wasn't air conditioning. There wasn't someone passing out pamphlets going, God loves you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they were hungering and thirsting for righteousness. They wanted the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They saw him, that, the, that Yeshua it was the prophet that Moses spoke about. And he spoke the words to them that God put in his mouth. Now, if we are disciples, we will speak the words that God puts in our mouths. So let's keep doing that. I love you. God bless you. Have an amazing day. And just stand firm, you guys. Like, don't give, in. Don't give up, but give in to God. I love you. And I pray for you guys every day. In the name of Yeshua. Amen.